Okay, uh, I want you to pick out uh, the amp meter that you want to go on each one. Joe, where'd you put that other amp meter? Okay, what I'd like you to do is you just choose which amp meter you'd like to go on which motor. You know, you, so, you, so everybody will know it's not fixed, or the chances are that there's at least 50, 50 odds you, I, you'd pick, give me the broken one, you know, if it was broke. <laughs> so you choose the one you like. Your, That's a good one. Yeah, they both. Is. Both Simpson? Mm -hmm. um, oh, you're already wired in this one. Go ahead, boy. I'm fine with that. Okay, this one goes on that motor is where it goes. This one goes on the motor over there. Is that where you want it? Yes, sir. That's or right. I can reverse it. Don't make any difference make to me. Difference. Okay. Does that satisfy everybody? You know these meters are working? <laughs> okay. Well, you're going to think this one's not working. Or I can put this one up there and you'll still say this one's not working. Go for it. Okay, uh, we're going to kick this off, and uh, power brokers have been fighting me tooth and nail. Uh, they don't want this technology out, but I know that God's with me, and he's bringing it forward now. Uh, and that uh, we got two identical pumps. They're both positive displacement pumps. Uh, I know all about pumps. I worked on them for two years when I was a young man, hey. and that's why I use a positive displacement pump is that uh, it's just like taking a five gallon bucket and reaching down and getting a five gallons of water. Now when you pick it up, you know you got five gallons of water. Now if you turn it upside down, you'll dump all the water out. That's what a positive displacement pump is. Whatever water is in that chamber, when it goes down, it's gonna smash it all out of there. It's positive displacement, it's very efficient. It's always in the 90% efficient base basis. And it'll push against a pressure head. A centripetal pump will not push against a pressure head well because you've got the gaps in the blades. And what it'll do is push back through it if you put high pressure on it. That's why uh, these pumps are used in construction sites where they're going to pump mud and other things that takes a lot of pressure, you know, to get it out and move it. That's why they use them. You see them in the construction sites. They're very good pumps, hold up well. But I took them because it's a positive displacement pump. You can't trick it. Whatever you get in it, you got to move it, or it's going to choke your motor down. Uh, and that's why I like it. Now, that's why I've chose this. Now, I've taken a GE motor that copied my technology. This motor right here came out in Granger Catalog in 1988. Uh, now, they just stole my technology and put it out. Now, I knew at the time that uh, they were just copying what I'd published in my book in 1984, that I'd sold over 9,000 copies around the world. Uh, and uh, I had over 200 major corporations buy that book. Major corporations bought that book uh, immediately as soon as it came out. They were the first people who started buying it. Major corporations all around the world bought it and started copying it. And there's a lot of patents been issued by the U.S. government. They have fought this tooth and nail. They've tried to buy it out from me, threatened my life. God Almighty has kept me alive. Uh, now what you're going to see is that uh, I didn't try to sue these people at the time because I knew I had not captured the total energy that I knew that was in this mass. This is converting mass uh, on a 100% conversion process. Now most of y'all people don't realize it, but a nuclear reactor that y'all are familiar with, you know how efficient it is? It's not efficient. It's less than 1% efficient. There is, you cannot tell me another mechanical device that is made by man that is less than 1% efficient, other than a nuclear reactor. It's less than 1% efficient. Uh, now I'm converting mass into energy on a 100% conversion process without any pollution to the environment or the human race. It's what you're gonna see. And then, uh, in fact, if you pull up <coughs> uh, my site, uh, Joe, how do you pull up that site? Uh, and if you pull that up, you can see a video that's an hour and 10 minutes long of the whole history of my fight documented by the news media. Not what I said, 
what the news media has said and more than 40 scientists who came to my home uh, as non-believers, I'm talking about nuclear physicists, physicists, electrical engineers, mechanical engineers, chemists, came as non-believers. They signed affidavits swearing that this would change the world. And the reason why was they used an oscilloscope. The oscilloscope is the most accurate measuring device in the world. Those scientists, when they first came there, they wouldn't use an amp meter. But the reason is simple. It's not very efficient. It's highly inefficient. It's got a, a, a little coil spring in it that's got a certain tension on its recovery, and it never goes any faster, no matter what you do. It's always going to recover the same speed, no matter what you do. So if you get a big spike of current moving at a million cycles a second, that amp meter won't even see it. It won't even know it even occurred. A oscilloscope will show it to you on a screen just like that. And what it looks like on this back spike that these scientists saw was a big negative spike. And the, now to read an oscilloscope properly, you have to keep the image on the screen. Now when they kept that image on the screen, the input current was so low, it stayed on the ground position. They didn't even have to use their mind. They just looked at the area of this big negative spike. And they knew it was greater than the input power because it showed nothing. Now there was something going in, it was milli milliamps. But on the, uh, to keep this image on the screen of this big spike, it showed nothing on the oscilloscope. And the oscilloscope is the most accurate measuring device in the world. Now these scientists, <clears throat> the whole world owes these men an apology because this was published and the world didn't do anything. Uh, now just recently I've captured all this. This machine right here, when I first built it, it was making lightning. I mean a streak of lightning this long and this wide. That's in the back spike. Uh, Joe Noffy, who I've hired as president of the company that I formed, brought a guy from uh, the power company out of Atlanta, Georgia. I was down in Fort Myers when I built this machine five years ago. And it was producing lightning. He walked in and saw this streak this long and this wide of fire. As Soon as he saw it, you know what he said? He was from, from, me, from me to you. And he immediately said, I don't need to see anything else. He said, those batteries can't produce that. He said, I've seen it one time in my life. And he said, that's when we was using high powered lines and we tried to break a circuit this far apart with a big throw switch. And it, it was a humid day. It ionized the air and shot straight across. He said, I saw a stream of fire that's like the one you produced. And he said, this was millions of watts, millions of watts. Uh, he said, that's what you're producing. These batteries can't produce it. And he gave Joe Noffy $10,000, uh, you know, to help us go forward because he knew that it was going to do what I said. Now, me and Joe's talked about it. We think that uh, he was told to back off from it because he kind of got quiet after he went back and started talking to his people about it. Uh, the power company didn't want it, didn't want him to fool with it. Now, he's just retired from the, the uh, Alabama, no, the uh, Atlanta power company. Uh, and that power company owns, don't they own a whole bunch of areas, Joe? Yeah, that's Georgia Power, part of the Southern County. Now, he had been with them as a high executive for numerous years. But numerous scientists have said what this would do for the world. Now, the power brokers have fought this tooth and nail, claimed that all these scientists uh, had conspired with me to trick, you know, you the people. Uh, and I was really dismayed that the people didn't do anything when all these scientists put their reputation on the line. Now just recently, God gave me the way to turn that spike of lightning into torque. And that's what you're going to see today. You won't see this lightning streak. You'll see a small spark every time I break that circuit. Same thing you see on that oscilloscope. But I've now captured that and put it back into this machine and then back into the batteries and it comes out as torque and that's what you're going to see. Now this GE motor that copied my work is highly efficient. It's a magnetic motor put out in 1988 after I published that book in 84. Now the manufacturer of this pump and that's the data from them right there. Um, on that pump <clears throat> this shows you it's not to exceed 65 revolutions a minute. They recommended a 10 horsepower gasoline engine run it 10 horsepower this is a three horsepower and it'll run it at 65 revolutions a minute of what they say you're supposed to run it at with a 10 horsepower motor 
And that tells you how efficient this GE motor is by using my technology. They didn't put it out until four years after I published that book. Now I'm gonna make it look ridiculous in this demonstration. Um, but what I'm gonna be doing, this machine weighs seven and a half thousand pounds. The rotor in it is 1,650 pounds. This is a Granger catalog. <coughs> Now what this shows you, from a 10 horsepower to a 250 horsepower, it shows you that the current gets bigger and bigger and bigger. It says full load amps. Um, at a 10 horsepower, uh, you're talking about 25 amps. Now let's go down here to 250. 250 um, horsepower, you got uh, 274 amps is what you have. Now that's 460 volts that they run it with. Now the heat in a motor is the current squared times the resistance. Now you square 274. That means multiply 274 by 274. You're gonna produce some heat, a lot of heat. That's why the motor wrap shops exist in every city in the United States, major city. It's because if somebody will put too much load on a motor in a fraction of a second, it'll burn the insulation off, short out the wiring, and they have to tear the whole thing down and redo it. That's what motor rewrap shops do. Um, and they're in every major city in the earth. On, there's, there's two or three of them right here in Mobile, for example. But you go into any city, there's two or three of them that do that. All they do is repair motors because they believe. Now what they're telling you still, they're telling you these motors all run off of current. Because watch how it does. Here's a 10 horsepower, it's 25.8 amps. A 15 horsepower is 37.6 amps. A 20 horsepower is 50 amps. A 25 horsepower is 67.6 amps. A um, 30 horsepower is 71.2. A 40 horsepower is 98.0. Uh, a 50 horsepower is 58 amps. 60. Well, they're varying here, the voltage. Here they got 460 volts, it's 68 amps. If there's 230 volts, then it's 147 amps. If they reduce the voltage, they increase the amperage drastically. Uh, the wattage will always turn out the same because if they raise the current on one on the low voltage, as they go to the higher voltage, uh, they bring the current down, but they still got high voltage and they still have high current. Now like on this 250 uh, horsepower motor, they don't only give you an example that you can go to 230, they only give you, say you have to run it on 460. But they're still, even at 460, they're drawing 274 amps. Now what they're still saying to the world, these motors run off of current. Now notice something, this 250 horsepower motor weighs 2,830 pounds, less than 3,000 pounds. This motor weighs 7,500 pounds. Now if they're right that all these motors and any motor made runs off the current, then this motor should not even be the run. This is the size of wire that I have going into it. You know what size of wire you have to have to carry 274 amps? You're talking about something like, like this, a big wire. Look at your, your battery wire, just your battery wire that goes to a little old starter in your automobile. And this big as my metal finger because it uses high current. And it's just a small motor, you know, about yay long and about this big around. Now all of y'all have seen this, even if you're not really familiar with it, the women may not be familiar with it, but you've seen it. It's a big wire hooked to your battery. Uh, and I'm sure the women have even seen that wire hooked to your battery. That goes down to your starter. Uh, it's gonna turn your engine over. Now, why? Because they believe that the current in a motor is what produces the magnetic field, that the wire is dormant like a water pipe carrying water. That's their quote. Now, if that's true, this motor won't run. What they say is true, this motor won't run. It's got a rotor in it, 1,650 pounds. That's a 450 pound flywheel on it. Uh, and if you try to turn this motor by hand with nothing hooked to it, it's hard for you just to turn it physically. Uh, yet I run it off of milliamps. And you'll see that the power goes negative constantly on an amp meter because now I've captured that and put it back into the system by the grace of God. 
this motor is ready to go forward for all humanity. And all y'all should get behind it and write your senators and congressmen and you're going to see it right here as soon as we run this. Uh, you watch how quick that the battery voltage will start falling on that GE motor battery pack. Now when you put batteries in series, the current is equivalent to what's in one battery. No matter how many you got, you put them in series, the current is equivalent into one battery. You put, you put them in parallel, then you multiply the current capacity, but the voltage will be that of one battery. Now when you put them in series, you multiply the voltage, but the current is of one battery. Now they teach you that the uh, motor runs off of current, and the wire's dormant like a water pipe carrying water. Now I'm going to show y'all that's totally false. They also tell you that the lines of force of a magnet, and this is their quote, is imaginary. Now as a young man, I thought that sounded ridiculous because I could hold up a magnet and see it snatch up a piece of iron, and I've been very sports-minded all my life since I was a boy. And I know that something don't move unless you put in part energy into it. It was obvious to me this was not imaginary. Uh, did we bring that big wrench I meant to bring? I meant to bring a large wrench, and I was going to show it to you. That a magnetic field is just as real as a wrench this long. And if you've got a brain, you don't have to see it. Because you can take magnets, and it does work for you. Just like this rotary right here weighs 120 pounds. There's not a wire hooked to it. There's not a battery hooked to it. It's going to rotate every time this magnet and this motor rotates. Now, if the lines of force of a magnet are imaginary, there's no way that you're going to turn that 120-pound rotary with imagination. Like all y'all can sit there and try to imagine for it to turn, it ain't going to turn. All right, here it is. All right, thank you. Now, you see this right here. And there's, a, there's an old quote about a monkey wrench. Get a bigger monkey wrench, stupid. <laughs> and all you men know what that means. <laughs> it really uh, uh, doesn't make you work. It, it makes you, as far as you're concerned, easier because the law of levers is what you're doing. It's the law of levers. Well, the law of levers exists with lines of force of a magnet just as, re just as real. And to me, it's just as real as this monkey wrench is real. And I can see it and I can use it just like I can use a monkey wrench. And y'all gonna see this magnet rotate and know what they teach is just a blatant lie. Not only that, it's an arrogant blatant lie because it flies in the face of just plain common sense. That's what you're gonna see. Uh, El, what are we ready over there? Yeah, there we are. <clears throat> All right, uh, now I put red dye in the water over here on this pump. That means that you use what they teach you and deliberately try to teach you falsehoods and just like they fought me tooth and nail because they don't want y'all to get behind this and I want y'all to think about something. Uh, the nuclear reactors and the atomic bomb that you're familiar with, you know how that got started? <clears throat> Guy named Fermi on the football stadium in Chicago had 400 tons of material and he had a sustained chain reaction of less than a half of a watt. A half of a watt. A night light draws a lot more than a half of a watt. You know what he got when he did that? Billions of dollars. Billions of taxpayers' money from your grandparents and et cetera. They built an entire city out there in the West to build an atomic bomb that now threatens all life upon this earth. And even nuclear reactors. No city wants it because that they want to dump stuff and they have leaks and radiation. And New Jersey, um, woke everybody up and that occurred. Uh, yet that system is less than 1% efficient as a result of an accidental discovery. You're going to see something beat the hell out of half of a watt. We're talking about horsepower. Yet this battery voltage is not going to fall at all like you would expect it to. This motor, just like this 250 horsepower motor, if you just tried to run it with no load on it, I guarantee you, if it draws 274 amps there, it's going to draw at least 50 amps just to run it. Now, I hadn't seen the motor, but I don't have to see it. I know how motors work. Uh, it's always a proportional of whatever they put you under load. And it'll, it'll use power whether you use it or not just to run it. This motor right here should be taken twice that by what they teach. 
it ought to be drawing uh, under load, it ought to be drawing twice 274 amps. That motor weighs 300, I mean almost 3,000 pounds, this one weighs 7,500 pounds, more than double that. Uh, so I hope y'all know that this is not a trick. It's converting mass into energy or 100% conversion process. Over 40 scientists have stated this to y'all 20 years ago, and the world did nothing. And I was on every major paper in the United States. I was written up in Life magazine, September 1986. It's David against Goliath. Uh, and that's what you're going to see right now. Is it, any questions before we start running it? Yes, sir. What kind of a what? Oh, we're talking about thousands of percent efficient. Thousands of percent. Not a hundred. Thousands. And you can see it for yourself. See, I don't want you to blindly follow me. I want you to watch this amp meter. And we're going to shoot it up on this screen. Ed has been very kind and he's behind this. He knows that it works. He's going to shoot it up on this screen every time I take a measurement. And you can see that motor when we take the voltage on it. You'll see the battery pack, you'll see what it falls every 15 minutes, we'll take a reading every 15 minutes. And, and you watch, see I want you to tell me what the efficiency is after you see it. Is that fair? And see the motors will speak for themselves. Alright, now you're a technical person. You know that what I'm saying is right. This motor should not run off everything you've been taught. Should not run off of this wire right here. Now should it? You've never seen this. See, he knows that it, it shouldn't. He's been taught that it should not because every motor that's built, they think it runs off high current, so they build it to run off high current. And, every, and because it is, current heat is current squared. And just like on this motor right here, last night, now Joe will tell you, this back spike took out some diodes I have in this system now these diodes are 1,000 volt diodes, diodes with 20 amp capacity. And that's where you could run it at that all the time. Now they always build it a little bit stronger, like it'll take 30 amps for you know, a fraction of a second. Well it blew the diode like it wasn't nothing. Now 20 amps times 1,000 volts is 20,000 watts to blow that diode. Did you see it happen or not, Joe? He was holding the wire when he hooked it to the battery. Now it had been running the machine and we was checking it. And then we stopped and went somewhere and did something, came back and we did it again. And that's when he touched the battery and the battery just shorted out because it had just burnt right through that diode and just shorted right out that battery pack. And uh, that's not imaginary. That's what all these scientists saw on the oscilloscope and you know and you can tell these people, the oscilloscope is the most accurate measuring device in the world. And you see him agreeing with me. Every competent person has been taught that because it moves, reads stuff in millions of cycles a second. There's no kind of physical amp meter can even come close to that. Now that's what all these scientists looked at. And I have great uh, respect for what those men did and I would like for y'all to. They spoke out for y'all a long time ago, but the world didn't do anything. Don't let them down. When you see this, I want y'all to get excited, just like he wants to know what the efficiency is. When you see it, don't walk away here from here and then say, we don't have any obligation to do anything. Let Joe do it all. Y'all all, when you stand before God, have got the same moral obligation to help bring this technology forward because I know God's given it to me because he knew I would not sell the world out, and I have not. I've been a ferocious warrior for humanity. And God's given me great health. I'm 70 years young right now. I, you could go down the Y, you'll see me move on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. More than 20,000 pounds in 15 minutes. God has given me that. Uh, to serve humanity and to serve Him. That's what this technology is going to do. Why don't you go ahead and kick that one off, then we'll kick this one off. I see you. Joe, what's the time now? You got 18 minutes to 12. Is that what you got? I got it, I got it, I got it. I'll use myself. I got the no, no, I'm, I'll just use okay. this. Okay. All right, I'm 
going to get the. Now you can see this red water running through here, and I did this deliberately so that you know this is costing y'all money. And this is not a gimmick. This is the truth. It's just to amplify it to you. And I've got green water in my pump over here. It means that you're going to save money. Just like you look in your wallet and see what color your money is. It's green. Uh, they're changing some of it to yellow now. I notice on a $10 bill. Uh, hey, put that board back over there. Well, you got this thing down in the water. Oh, wait a minute. You got to get this thing up. Do what? I thought y'all had a weight on this. They didn't get that angle on there. But it's been supported out here. You know, it should be on the bottom. Yeah. Now come here. I need you to do this, and I need you to get over there and do that, okay? Right. Uh, can't keep up with these readings. Yeah. All right, now you can see this current going from uh, 10 to 20. 10 to 20, 10 to 20. And that's because that rubber diaphragm takes a lot of power. And that's going from 10 to 20 amps, 10 to 20 amps. It can't bother me, Joe. I, I ain't got the voltage. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Do what? Take that loose. No, uh -uh, right here. This thing's vibrating so much, it's taking this meter off here. I want y'all to be able to see it.
Yeah. That's amazing because I looked at this. You would have burned that motor up about uh, a minute and a half, two, three, maybe four or five minutes ago. Talking about this motor? The heat, yes. Um, yeah, well, see, this is GE motor copying my work. This motor didn't come out until 1988. Now, notice something. This wire on that motor, you see how little it is? Now, this is a three horsepower motor. Uh, now, they didn't have this. You look in any Granger catalog before 1984, they had a little old magnetic motor in there about that big. It was a, uh, I think it was a quarter or a fifth horsepower motor. It's all, because I was trying to get one to uh, show against my technology that had some power and I couldn't find one to my dismay. Well, then they came out with this, but they only put it out this far because they still haven't mastered this and God didn't let them master it. This motor here is gonna beat the dickens out of that. I mean, see, you're right. This motor should have been burned up, should have been drawing enough current. It shouldn't have been able to run a three horsepower motor off this little wire. Uh, and you're right, if you look in before 1984 at, in motors, you wouldn't find one with a little wire like this. And you know that, you, you, were, back, you were active back at that time. And uh, he's just speaking the truth to y'all, and I'd like y'all to listen to what he's telling you. Well, my name is Joe Erdahl, I'm a retired engineer from yep. Northrop Grumman. Oh, you are, and what's your name again? Joe Erdahl. Joe, okay, I can remember that, <laughs> okay. Uh, and uh, are you, you living here in town? Yes, sir. Okay, well, I appreciate you know you being here very much. Yeah, well, why don't you jot his name down? Joe, what does GE call this technology? Well, they just put it out like you know it wasn't any big deal. You know, they tried to hide it really. Uh, and uh, Men Coder copied this and put it out on a trolling motor. Now, the director of Mobile Oil, Dr. Roger Hastings, is on this video I was telling you about. He was a senior physicist with Sperry Univac. He's on the video saying if you got any kind of a conscience, you can't walk away from this. Well, he walked away with it from it real quick when they offered him a lot of money uh, and uh, went in business with the director of mobile oil. They bought up a little mom and pop uh, director of mobile oil. Now, what's the director of mobile oil buying a little, it was a little tiny mom and pop trolling motor business about 60 miles uh, below uh, Minnesota. Uh, Minneapolis, Minnesota, uh, and Roger had gone down there to get them to get behind it, and then power brokers started getting to him, and the fact, in 1987, he told me, he said, Joe, I don't want to be involved in your work anymore. Uh, I know he was told to shut up, and I know he got paid a lot of money, uh, but he's on this video. You'll see him saying, when you came down, because uh, Garland Robinette was asking him, he said, what effect will this have on the world? He said, well, it'll change it. He said, do you understand how ridiculous that's going to sound to my listeners? He said, yeah, but it's ridiculous it sounded to me the first time I heard it. But he said, when you came down and run tests as I've run and seen that there's more energy out than what you put in, and he acted very sincere. He looks right at the camera and says, if you got any kind of a conscience, you can't walk away from this. Well, he walked away quick. And so did even my patent attorney. Uh, but see, I didn't try to sue these people because I knew I had not mastered it yet. I know what E equals MC square is. Just like Einstein said, there was more energy in the theater ticket than in the Persian army. And his colleagues were horrified when he said it. Um, and his comment, they asked him, when are you going to do it? He said, I don't know that man will ever do it. But he said, it's done throughout nature all the time. He said, look at the sun, look at the stars. He said, that's E equals MC square. Well, he was proven right, right here on the earth. By Fermi, he, out of the football stadium in Chicago, use 400 tons of material and produce less than a half of a watt. You're going to see a hell of a lot more than half of a watt produced over here by this machine right here. Now you'll notice that it don't come from the batteries. This battery voltage is going to fall on um, this machine in the next hour and a half. It's going to fall. It'll be down to the point we have to stop it because it'll be a 10% drop. And you have to stop a battery at 10% drop or that you tend to destroy the battery's uh, recharging effect. And that's just a well-known fact, and you know that fact. Uh, now, you'll notice that when we run that 7,500 pound machine and pump water for an hour and a half, then you don't see that results. The battery voltage is still up over 12 volts. Then what produced the power then? It's obvious that batteries didn't do it because this motor here is highly efficient this gentleman knows that it's highly efficient. It should have already burned up. It shows you uh, this is working on a limited way. 
this is working the way I know it should work. And the next machine I build will be small, about 600 pounds. And I know that where this one puts out thousands of times more than you put into it, this next machine will put out millions of times more than what you put into it. It's a new scientific principle that God's given me in the last four months. I haven't applied for the patent because I know that the U.S. government hits my patent as soon as I, my name goes in. And I had a guy at the patent office tell me, as soon as your name comes into the patent office, we all been told, you know, it goes up to the, uh, there's, in fact, there's the, the attorney, you'll see on this film I was telling you about, Jerry Sears, who was the top attorney for the U.S. Patent Office for 30-something years, is on that video admitting, after he comes out of court, that he was taking his orders from the present commissioner of patents because he tells Garland Robinette that when, because that, uh, Mr. William Schuyler was chosen as a special master. Now, he was a former commissioner of the U.S. Patent Office. He was an electrical engineer. The judge chose him, saying his credentials were superb. Now, when he looked at all this evidence pre presented by these scientists, he said the evidence is overwhelming that the invention works and there's no contradictory factual evidence. Uh, and I say, just like I can show you a mechanical laws of a gyroscope, a mechanic explained gravity, electricity, magnetism, wave and particle, cellulite, and the property of inertia. Just like you take a conductor, move it at right angles to a magnetic field, current will go one way. You push it up, it'll go the opposite way. Now, as a young man... X sub C or X sub L, it's awfully close to being neutral. I beg your pardon? Your X sub C or X sub L is pretty close to being neutral. You're almost at zero point. How close are you? Yeah, um, we way over being, uh, you know, just 100% efficient. We way up into thousands of percent efficient. The load and the heat. The heat's what robs the efficiency. Yeah, the but see, that motor never gets hot. Yeah, I don't care how much work you make it do. It never gets hot. It never gets hot. I haven't heard you use the word perpetual motion. Well, it's not perpetual motion. You're converting mass into energy on a 100% conversion process. It's not perpetual. Now, see, I uh, st started on this because I've always used my mind and the science says so, it's just not true. It's just simple as that. Um, as a young man, because I've taught myself physics, chemistry, astronomy, electrical engineering, and I know that God gave me the knowledge. I just read books and I know exactly what it means. Uh, when I was going to uh, O'Shell Road here in Mobile, in the second grade, I made 11th grade reading comprehension. At that time, they didn't have but 11th grades in Mobile, Alabama. Uh, and in fact, the teacher came in because I was always <laughs> getting in trouble because my mind was active. He, she came in one day and she said, oh, class, y'all know what Joseph did. And I thought, uh-oh, I'm in it now. <laughs> and, and then she spoke up and she said, he made 11th grade reading comprehension. <clears throat> and uh, if you have great reading comprehension, then you understand what you read. Uh, and God has given me this. When I've read books, it's been easy for me. It hasn't been hard. Uh, in fact, that was pleasant. Now, having to face society and try to get this out has it, really been aggravating to me uh, because it's been a hard fight that God has taken me through. It's been a hard road that he's brought me to this point. But you're going to see this motor. I want you all to see what happens with this. But even now, this motor is warm, uh, was warm when we, I felt it just as we turned it off. Just lightly warm, just lightly, you know, just, just lightly warm. But you're right, under this load, Another motor would have a wire, just like if you look at your starter, and he knows it. You got a big wire going into your starter. Uh, drive, so you get the heat from the load of the pump, not from the motor. Yeah, but see, this is, uh, yeah, they got a, and that's another thing. This motor here has an eight to one mechanical advantage. It's got a big gear here. I got a small gear on this one. It's an eight to one mechanical advantage. I have to baby this motor to get it to run this pump. Now you'll notice, on my motor over there, I don't bait it. This gearbox is gone on that pump over there. Both of these pumps came from the manufacturer. They took off the motors, and on my pump, they took off the gearbox. I hooked straight to the shaft, showing you the power that motor's got. I don't need no gearbox, uh, because this is E equals MC square, and you're converting mass into energy on a 100% conversion process. And this is not a result of an accident on my part. I started on this more than 40 years ago, right here in Mobile as a young man, way back in 65. And see, when I read that you could move a conductor through a magnetic field at a snail's pace and the current would take off at the speed of light, well, I thought, well, that's a bunch of crap, because I'd played a lot of sports in my life. 
And I knew nothing went any faster than the energy you parted into it. And you're going to move something at a snail's pace? And they even said, well, it's like billiard balls. Um, and you take a stack of balls and hit one into it, and the ball will come off the end, and that's the current moving. Well, I shot pool, and I still had the same mechanical problem. You shoot a ball real slow into a stack of pool balls, and the ball on the end will move even slower than that. Drag, yeah, yeah and, and it clearly shows you uh, it ain't moving at the speed of light because that ball will just start just easing off. You know, you ease it into it and it'll just ease off and it'll ease off at a speed less than this, what this one is. So I knew that none, nothing they said mechanically made a bit of sense to me. So I looked for the truth. I felt it was imperative you understand all these things and it took me three years to figure out how you move uh, a conductor through a magnetic field now, uh, uh, Tesla made the quote, whoever could mechanically explain electricity would make the greatest discovery in the history of man. Well, I did that way back in 1968. Some kids woke me up in Mobile trying to get wheelers on their bicycle. And the little kids could get it up about that high. So I said, I'm gonna make a three-wheel bike. I took an 80-pound flywheel, took a positive clutch out of a 30-horsepower motor, killed kids to get in it, build up inertia, and when it do, it take off like a bat out of Hades. Front end and come off the ground and leave black streaks on the pavement like that, and kids' eyes would get this big. And uh, I was worried though, because the kids were wild on it, and uh, I was worried they were going to get hurt. And I had heard that a gyroscope was a stabilizer, so I went to the Mobile Library, like I always did when I wanted to know information, because I didn't have the money to buy all the books all, that I read. But the library had them, and I'd go and read it. When I looked up the laws of a gy gyroscope, what had bugged me for three years. How does this current know which way to go? When you push it down, the current will go one way. You push it, the conductor up in a magnetic field, the current will go the other way. And you go parallel, and this is what bugged me. No matter how vigorously you move the wire, or how much energy you put into it, you'd get zilts, long as you maintained a parallel position. Now that told me it was mechanical. Now I blamed myself. I said, well, I'm not smart enough to know what this mechanical entity is, but I am smart enough to know it's mechanical and I'm gonna look for it. For three years, it drove me crazy trying to figure it out. And I didn't know the laws of a gyroscope. I went down and looked up the laws of a gyroscope to make that wheelie bike real stable because I was worried about kids getting hurt on it. They were wild as they could be on it. <laughs> but uh, you know how kids are. In fact, one of them told me, make it fly, make it fly. <laughs> uh, uh, and uh, anyway, when I looked up the laws of a gyroscope, it struck me like lightning because you spin up that gyroscope, push down on its axis, it'll go one way. Push it up, it'll go the other way. Push down parallel to its axis and the gyroscope will not pivot. It shows you that the energy in the magnetic field is a gyroscopic particle, moving at the speed of light and spinning, just like a gyroscope. That's why it moves at right angles to the force and goes down, the, when you move that wire to snail's force, pace, it'll go down that wire to speed of light. And more than 40 scientists have listened to me and signed affidavits that my theory was right and it answered questions for them that they had never been had it satisfactorily answered to them when they were a young man. Now what I just told you made sense, didn't it? Absolutely. And he just said absolutely. Now see, it's a mechanical explanation, but I applied it to gravity, electricity, magnetism, wave and particle theory of light. Precession. That's what inertia is. Precession is your missing key. Yeah, but see, but precession is the same thing. I show you that, uh, you know, they were mystified when you go in and out of space. Why is it you take two big, two balls, a big one and a little one? There's no gravitational field, but it's still hard for you to push the little ball uh, to, to a certain extent, but then the big ball is still a lot harder for you to push than the little one. Now, science was dumbfounded, as you know. Well, how is that? If there's no gravitational field, how can it do this? Simple. I teach what prevails our galaxy is the gyroscopic particle. And it's a known fact that an electromagnetic field prevails our galaxy. I've already shown that the Earth's true axis is warped into outer space and aligns with the sun's magnetic field. Uh, the, Earth's, uh, ma the true axis is a result of the Earth's magnetic axis warped in outer space. And I proved it mathematically. Dr. Smith, who was chief of space environment branch at Huntsville, Alabama, had his statisticians check my numbers and they quoted, the chances of me being wrong was almost totally impossible because the Earth's true axis every 25,800 years makes a cone in the sky. Well, isn't it interesting? Every day, the Earth's magnetic field does that once a day. Once a day, much the same angle. That's what the magnitude of this is. 
This thing they said he's going to have to leave soon because we will know we're going to run the big money. All right, we're going to run it in just a minute. Joe, do you still have any of your books available on your website? No, the company, and I think Power Brokers burned it down, had my, all my dies and stuff making the book uh, burned down, and they didn't tell us this for almost a year later. Uh, that's why we. When I visited with you out in Scottsdale to, to, to get one of your books, I was just hoping you had some more in print still. Uh, no, we, we plan on doing it, but we don't have any now. All right, let me run this system here. Uh, trouble over there? Y'all okay? Alright, I just want this thing to get up to speed without blowing those diodes. If y'all can see this amp meter over here, you see it go down here below zero. <coughs> now that's the first time we've been able to make an amp meter do that. <coughs> With this new scientific principle that I have now incorporated in this machine, you'll see it go past that zero mark. Now this goes up to about four amps. Now it only goes up for a second, then swings back down. Can y'all see this? Up on that screen? Come over here and shoot it from this side. You're shooting it at the wrong angle. I want them to see that go below zero. That meter is going below that zero mark. And that meter is not supposed to show you negative power. It's only made to show you positive power. Now, you know something different has to be happening. That machine weighs seven and a half thousand pounds. Uh, it should be drawing a phenomenal amount more power just to run this motor, much less try to pump water with it. And you got a, a 10 foot head on this, on this water that you're pumping. We don't have any mechanical advantage. You'll see that magnet up here with no wires attached to it. That's a 120 pound rotary, right here. Now why does it move? If that ma magnetic field is imaginary, now notice something, until I ran that motor, all of y'all thinking together, you're just trying to imagine, make it run, rotate, it wouldn't rotate. Now as soon as I run this machine, because that magnetic field is real, and it comes from the atoms of that material, and that magnetic field comes way out here. I know because I've tested it. 
uh, that's how far out it comes. I mean, with enough thing, it'll do do work for you. This far out, as it goes on out, way on out, but it gets weaker and weaker as it expands on out. Uh, now this motor is just going to run and run and run. I hadn't checked this voltage. I'm going to run it at this speed because I'm worried about what happened last night. I blew out diodes. I doubled more than doubled. I got diodes in here now that gives me uh, 40 amps and 2,000 volts. Now I want you to notice the voltage I have on it. Now Joe was holding this when it shorted out. And as soon as it shorted, I uh, blew it out. It shorted out the batteries and it burnt the end of the wire off that he was holding. Burnt it slap off. Uh, I have two little fine wires in this system that's got tiny wires hooking the batteries. And I do that because it blew them as well. Um, and that keeps from doing any damage to the motor when something like that happens. Because I know that mechanical things that man builds always fail. You know, sooner or later. It just happened sooner than I thought it would because I hadn't had it in there that long. But right now, the voltage we're running this is... So you shoot it like that or you want me to stand it up? Huh? Alright, we got 250 to 251. And uh, could, could they all see that on, on the screen? They said they couldn't see it at all. Okay, well it's uh, 250 to 251. Now we're going to run it and see what happens. And how long does it take it to fall? The battery is showing you how much current you're pulling. Because y'all know from your own experience, all of y'all, that's why I'm doing this, all of y'all have had experience with batteries from the time you were children and you played with little toys that had a battery in it. You knew when you run it very long, it would die off. And even now your grandkids, they'll come to you and hold it up. You know, when the battery's dead, you know, fix it, fix it, you know, fix it. And they want you to go get them another battery. <laughs> uh, but just like your car, all of y'all had experiences in cold weather uh, that your car don't crank right up and then you get four or five whacks on your battery and then you kill it. Y'all know that you have to baby any battery operated device you've ever had. You have to baby it when you're out in the field and you don't have access to AC power to charge it up. You have to baby it to use it. And you're always telling people to turn it off if you're not using it, you know, if you're not using it right. Or if you don't waste it, don't leave it on and go over there to your neighbor's house and leave it running. Uh, because you come back and it'll be dead. If you leave your car lights on for an hour and a half on your car, you won't crank your car. Well, we're going to pump this water and run a 7,500 pound machine. And the current's equivalent, even though we got 250 volts, the current it's equivalent to what's in one battery. Now they show you by this graph that all motors run off a of current. Now if that's true, this motor shouldn't be running because you see it go down there on the zero position more than it is up on the, on the high end at four amps. As soon as it gets to four amps, it immediately flies down. But it looks how long it hangs on the low end. You can tell it's easy, two to one in the time that it's down at the low end compared to the high end shows you that back spike is feeding back into it. Turn it where I can see it, Joe. Let me read it. Okay. Yeah. Now see, you're seeing it going down already. It's only been 10 minutes of running. It was going from 60 to 61. 
When y'all see this rotary rotate, does that tell you that this magnetic field is a real entity? That it's not imaginary? If it was imaginary, all y'all could think and make it rotate. Do you agree? If it was imaginary, all y'all together should be able to think and make it rotate. But you can't. But that magnetic field from that rotary can make it rotate. It shows you it is a real entity and it'll do work for you. Now prior to this time, the scientific community did not know how to capture it and utilize it. That's why they said this. They felt, uh, they felt totally inadequate. And I've had scientists tell me that I made them feel stupid. And I told them, well, you shouldn't feel that way. Uh, you, you feel that because you've been arrogant in, in your stupidity. You were arrogant in it. Not that you really didn't know. I said, but you were arrogant about it. Uh, I said, it's not wrong not to know something, but it's wrong to be arrogant about it. You know, and, and, and just say, come hell or high water, I got my mind made up and don't give me no facts. Uh, and that's the way the scientific community's been, other than those 40 scientists that came as non-believers and then signed affidavits and put their life reputation on the line. Yeah. Yeah. The 60 pounder you're talking about? The what? The 60 pounder, is that your next generation? Yeah. How many RPMs do you expect? On this next motor automobile? Yeah. Oh, it's going to be going fast. You know, probably 1,800 revolutions a minute. When do you think you'll have it? Oh, probably in the next uh, 60 days, probably. Good for you. I know it works. I'm, I'm good. No, this is it. This technology is now going to go forward rapidly. We're going to put this up on the internet and we're going to get a lot of support. Now, at 12.30, at 12.30, it's 12, almost 12.20 now by my watch. Um, what time you got? 12.15. Okay. He said he's got 12.15. Well, let's go by mine because I've been writing it down by mine. Uh, this has got 12.19. At 12.30 by my watch, I'm going to take another reading, both on my motor and on that motor. And I guarantee you, already, you will see a significant difference in what's happening. Now, that motor has a mechanical advantage to it of 8 to 1. This motor is hooked straight to the load. Uh, if you hook this load to that motor there, it would burn it up. If you hook that motor straight to that load without that big gear on it, you'd burn it up. Uh, I guarantee you this motor's getting warm already on the outside housing. Got a gear on. Now I don't have any gear on this one. Yet the motor doesn't get hot. Now y'all hang around till we read this and, and that'll be enough that you'll see it's gonna do what I tell you it's gonna do. a bolt already on this battery pack. One bolt in 30 minutes. It's dropped one bolt in 30 minutes. Now I'm going to go check this and see what it is. All right, now that dropped one bolt over there in 30 minutes. See, I got to reach over here. All right, she gave me two numbers. What's she got? 250 to 251. 250 to 251. Almost 252. Oh, here we go. Oh, 
I'm pulling it apart. All right, let me ask y'all a question. Hey, uh, this is this is uh, fell one boat in 30 minutes. That hasn't fallen at all. In fact, he told me now it's almost up to 252. Uh, now we were 250 to 251. Now he said it's 250 to 251, but it's going up in points, showing almost to two. That's what his comment was. Uh, shows his charge in that battery. But the main thing, it hasn't fallen. Now why is it that one has fallen one boat in 30 minutes showing you that it's using power from that battery pack because when you pull current from a battery, the voltage will fall. That's why your battery will go dead when you try to crank your car engine more than four or five times. Uh, and y'all all know that. That's why I'm using this so you'll know what it's doing. Now, now I've got a motor seven and a half thousand pounds hooked straight to that. That's got a mechanical advantage of eight to one. Got a big gearbox to it. Uh, that goes straight to it, showing the power that motor produces. Battery boat just doesn't fall. What does that tell you? If this one is falling, it shows you the battery's being used to produce this work that you see it do. If that one doesn't fall, I'm gonna ask the people. I wanted to run it less than that. How long do y'all need to see this to know it works? Let me ask y'all a question. How long do y'all need to see this run? that you know it works. Well, how many batteries you got on the big motor? Well, right now, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. 20, 20 batteries. Yeah. How many you got on that one? We got five. Now that doesn't make any difference. The current is what they tell you by looking at that graph. Runs motors. Look at the amp meter. This battery voltage does not fall. When you kill a battery, you do it by pulling current from it. Not pulling voltage from it. You kill it. A dead battery has voltage capacity. A dead battery has no current capacity. That's a fact. You can go to the junkyard, I can get batteries from the junkyard and run this machine. I've done it. Going to the junkyard, got batteries and ran it. Uh, now what does that tell you? It's, it's coming from this mass. It doesn't come from the batteries. And I've proved it over and over and over. Uh, now what I want to know from y'all, how long do you need to see this run? Y'all going to be up on the internet, on Google. Uh, but I want y'all's honest statement. That battery voltage has fallen one volt in 30 minutes. Now that's a small motor. It's got a mechanical advantage to it, an 8 to 1 mechanical advantage. This motor, I put it under extreme pressure. Now hear that back spike? That's that back spike that occurs. It's from that back spike. Now when it was, before I captured this, it was making long streaks this big long and wide and it sounded like dynamite going off. Uh, every time it broke that cycle, every two times the rotation, bow, 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 bow. And it's making lightning, bow, 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 just like lightning. And just like you hear thunder, you know, when you see lightning. That's what it was doing. Uh, but y'all ain't answered me. How long do y'all need to see it run before you totally believe it? Okay. All right, all of y'all, how long do you need to see it gone? They say they're satisfied. How long do y'all need to see it run? You can turn it off. Yeah. Okay, y'all can say you can turn this one off. 
Yeah, yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. Hey, Elwood. They said we can turn this one off. Where's your boat, John? Well, it was just 30 minutes ago. That's good. All right, y'all can hear me better. Anyway. Okay, now what they're doing, and I'd like you to get it, Ed. They all said that they ready for me to turn that one off. They believe what they're seeing. And I think that when we put this up on the internet, the rest of the world will see it. This voltage has not changed in that time. In fact, you commented it was going up like it was going to 52. Uh, before it was 250 to 51. Now it was, when you read it, it was 250 to 51 going, you said to two, showing it's being charged. Uh, yet the battery voltage is going up. If it's doing anything, it's not going down. Where did the power come from for that 30 minutes to pump that water? It had to come from that machine, just like when you heard that pow. That's a back spike. That, in, that battery can't take it. It builds up so much that you hear that, and that's because it jumps across that circuit. And then it goes, and then that's the air, just like when you got lightning. Thunder is simply air runs back together and it goes pow. That's why what thunder is. But it's because lightning separates the air. Then it rushes back and hits with such an impact, like doing your hands. That's what you hear when you hear that from that back spike. That's what 40 scientists have endorsed. Now this is going to run your house, cars, and everything else. And it's going to go forward from this point on. No, not yet, but if I did, what my enemies would say is Joseph Newman's a smart man and he's got something buried under his house. They started saying it before I even thought about trying to do it. That if you ever do it, if you ever do it, we're going to say that you got something buried under your house. Now you hear that. And I think that just blew my doubt. And I'm certain what he done. Now I had diodes on there that I stayed up to two o'clock last night. Uh, put them in series. They're a thousand volt diodes. When you put them in series, you multiply the voltage capacity, not the current capacity. It'll carry 20 amps, but I put two of them in parallel. So it'd take 2,000 volts and 40 amps. You didn't see no 40 amps going into that machine. Not even close to it. You didn't see 40 amps going into it. Yet I know I've just now blew them diodes and it stopped that, stopped that machine. Uh, I'm going to have to pot, build me a, a diode pack that's going to be massive to capture this lightning that I'm telling you I've converted into TARC uh, and that all those scientists have talked about. And I was up to 2 o'clock last night making this so it would, I could run it for you today. Now y'all saw it overload that. Now you take 40 amps, multiply it times 2,000, you're talking about a hellacious amount of wattage. Uh, even a thousand times 20 amps is 20,000 watts. You got 2,000, 40,000 watts. 40,000 watts is a phenomenal amount of power. And that's coming from that back spike, and that's why you hear that pow when you hear it. It busts through that, and then you hear that clap of, of energy again. Now, you didn't hear it as long as those diodes were taking it and were dumping it in that battery. You didn't hear that popping noise. Only when it finally destroyed the diodes did you hear the popping noise? But that's the real power that all those scientists saw on the oscilloscope, the most accurate measuring device in the world. They have all seen that. And that's the magnitude of it. I'm not going to apply for a patent until I get all the money to produce this technology. I'm going to keep this secret, what God has just given me. And I'm going to keep it secret uh, until uh, God puts up the money, and then, which I know he's going to do, and then I'm going to apply for a patent. Now, we've got some people in Washington, a big patent attorney firm that's been contacting me since the 80s, saying they want to represent me. And they're big. But I knew that they would need a lot of money because they're a big company. Uh, I'm going to go to those people because they've already shown me they were offended by how I'd been treated. Uh, and then I'm going to file for a patent in every country in the world. Uh, but I'll do it when the money's up because I know as soon as my name hits that patent office, it immediately kicks out and goes to the U.S. government. Because uh, I had a person call me from the U.S. Patent Office and tell me that they were offended by that. Uh, they worked at the Patent Office and they called me and gave me their name and I have to keep their name in secrecy. I promised them I would because they said they'd get fired 
if, if their name was used. And I just appreciated that the guy cared. You know, he was that caring. He was offended. He says, I work in the patent office. And he said, I left college because I believed in what it says, that um, the Congress had passed laws to stimulate creativity by which the inhabitants of this nation would benefit therefrom. That's what the patent office was made for. He said, I believe that as a young man. Then I come and find, well, that's not true at all. They want to kill you. <laughs> and, uh, Protect you to yeah. disconnect your battery. I beg your pardon? Once you got it running and you disconnect your battery, will it continue running without a battery hookup or not? No, you have to have voltage. It's the hydraulic pressure. Okay. Now, see, just like you saw, those battery voltages was rising, if anything. But you have to have voltage that aligns the atoms in that mass. And so it's feeding it back and forth. It's like a rubber ball bouncing. You know, you bounced a ball back when you was a kid and it wouldn't hardly lose energy. Remember that? You know, you just get it, you had a little ball with a rubber band on it. Well, that's the way this is doing, except it's doing it at the speed of light 186,000 miles a second. Okay, well, we're going to go. Thank you. Okay. Enjoyed it. Okay. Thank you all very much, all of y'all. And God bless y'all.